Welcome everybody who just joined. Uh, this is our next speaker, Stefan Bortsmeyer. He was talking about testing DOH and DOT servers for compliance and performance. Okay. The floor is yours. Good luck. Hello everyone. Would you like some water? Oh uh, yes, please. Oh, on beer, too. Um, There's no beer, sorry. Okay. So it's a good thing that I don't have a lot of time because I don't have many concrete results to show because the problem is more complicated than I thought when I suggested this talk. So, general context, uh, DOE, DNS over encryption, DOT, DO, um, DOH, maybe DNS over quick one day. Um, the general idea is I don't think that it would be a good idea to have only two or three DOE resolvers managed by big US company. The good solution, in my opinion, is to have many, many possible uh, DOE resolvers. But if you have many of these resolvers, you meet one problem, which is to choose one. You need information about the server. So you need to test compliance or to assess compliance. Is this server a correct working server and also performance because of course as you know everything depends on dns if dns is slow or unresponsive everything is lost also one good reason to have some way to testing compliance of resolvers is to help managing directories of resolvers you have always already today several public directories of DOE resolvers. Typically, they are managed by end. Uh, servers, resolve, DOE resolvers come and go. The directories are not always up to date. Uh, when you want to have some specific characteristics, such as uh, IPv6 support, for instance, uh, it has to be done by end, which is not uh, good for the quality of the directories. So, for the compliance, I uh, played with a lot of uh, DOE uh, resolvers from the beginning using different tools to test uh, if they work or not. Most of the tests that I'm going to enumerate come from a real problem with one of the resolvers. For instance, the RFC says that a DOH resolver has to accept GET and POST method, but I saw a DOH uh, resolvers with only support for POST, for instance. Uh, also, uh, robust nest when you have a strange or unexpected method. The RFC about DOH doesn't mandate that you have to support ADD, but I've seen at least one DOH resolver when you send an ADD method, it doesn't reply, it doesn't shut the communication, it just times out after some delay. Same thing when there are broken requests. Uh, in some cases, a broken request, for instance, a DNS request, which is not a proper one, may break the c connection, the HTTP2 connection. Uh, same thing for MIME types. Also, it could be interesting to test the TLS quality, uh, ciphers accepted, protocols accepted. I hesitate on this one because at least for DOH, you can use existing tools like ssllabs.com um, which when you want to test a DOH uh, resolver. And also, very important, both DOT and DOH allows you to have several DNS requests per connection because as you know, DNS has to be small latency and setting up a TCP, TLS, HTTP2 connection takes some time, so it's absolutely necessary to have the ability to uh, put several uh, DNS requests on one connection, not creating a new connection each time. It works more or less. I remember one big DOT resolver when it was first announced, uh, it was possible only to send one request and after that the connection was shut down. It has been fixed since, but it's still important. Uh, and also, of course, uh, out of order answers because it's not enough to have several, connect several requests on one connection. You know that a, a response time of a resolver, unlike an authoritative server, the response time of a resolver depends highly on the request. If you do a request for a domain whose authoritative name servers are broken, the resolver will take a lot of time. So you need 
to be able to receive and process and receive out of order answers. If you send a request for a slow domain, then a request for a fast domain, you certainly expect the answer for the fast domain to come back first while we are still waiting for the slow domain. And also several IP address, it's very classical, it's funny that in 2020 we still have problems, for instance, with IPv6 and I've seen DOH or DOT resolvers with a name that has both IPv4 and IPv6 address. The IPv4 address worked, the IPv6 timed out. Bad. Uh, also, Compliance is not enough. We also need performance. The case of DOT and DOH is uh, a bit different. Uh, as I said, you need to, do it, to be able to do several DNS requests in one the TCP TLS session. Uh, demultiplexing in the case of DOT is done on the basis of the query ID. So typically the client is supposed to send as many requests as they want with a proper query ID, and when the answers come back, the client is supposed to use the query ID to know um, how to match the answer with the request. Uh, of course, it's interesting only if there is pipelining, the ability to send the request even before you receive the answer, on out of order, as I said, if a uh, uh, slow question starts before a, first, a fast question, you expect the answers in the opposite order. For DOH, it's a bit different. You also need several requests on one HTTP2 uh, session. You certainly don't set up a complete HTTP session for each request, but the demultiplexing, demultiplexing is not done by the query ID, it's done by the use of the streams of HTTP2. You know that DOH requires HTTP2, which means that you have several streams in, um, in the uh, section and they run in parallel. We, and that's the reason why in the RFC it says that the query ID has to be zero because you don't need it for demultiplexing. So the server needs to be able to process them in parallel, send answers out of order. What does it make in practice? That, that was the theory, now a bit of practice. Uh, for DOT, I've tested, uh, I, I both tested with actual uh, software on servers, and also I checked with the documentation on the software on some directories, like the one on dnsprivacy.org, that I was correct. So out of order, uh, DOT works with Google Public DNS. It works with Cloudflare. Uh, if you take software, it works with uh, NOT. And I believe that Cloudflare uses NOT, uh, which explain. But also it works if you have set up bind. Bind doesn't have dot today officially, but you can run it behind S-Tunnel or another TLS proxy, and in that case, out of order works, apparently. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work on uh, the Quad9 service, which I believe uses Unbound. It doesn't work on Unbound, and it doesn't work on DNS Dist, which is really sad, because DNS Dist is a very, very good software, very useful, so um, I will try to uh, ask the DNSD developer to do something about it. <laughs> yes? Uh, I'm, no, uh, the client is, um, uh, in, in that case, the client is a, a stub client and the resolver is unbound. It works now? Okay, great. So I have to fix the slides. Thank you. Um, for DOH, um, well, that's why I had a lot of problems. I was planning to use libcurl to do HTTP2 on streams, and apparently libcurl is a bit too difficult for me. I have to upgrade my brain. Um, so what I saw is that if you use a, um, Google proprietary a protocol, it's DNS over HTTPS, but it's not the official DOH, it works. You can have several HTTP2 streams, and you receive the answer out of order, which is a good thing. I didn't test yet with uh, DOH, and I'm not sure that someone did it. Uh, uh, is it 
well, if you have information about this, I'm interested. Can we use HTTP2 streams and have out of order answers with DOH resolvers? That's on my to do list. I'm starting on Monday. There is a new intern starting uh, um, at AFNIC, and he will have to work on this. Poor guy. Um, among the, for performance measurements, we have many tools to measure performance, and some of them have support for DOT and not for DOH. Uh, for instance, DNS meter, as far as I thought, as I see, as not even TCP, not even plain TCP. Uh, DNS perf as a DOT, but not DOH, but it's, well, it's a good thing. Flamethrower as a um, DOT, and it's very, very efficient if you want to kill uh, a DOT server. Yeah? And there was a DOH patch uh, for, for Flamethrower. Okay, not, the, not yet officially integrated? No, no. Okay. So, so Flamethrower will have DO hopefully soon, the DO, DOH. Uh, DNS Blast has no TCP at all. So, um, my, so as you see, there are not a lot of uh, actual results yet. I'm planning to work on it. Uh, we already developed a small testing tool which will make easy to do this sort of test. And uh, I'm interested if people here have ideas, proposals, fixes, and want to work on this sort of stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. So, any remarks, Andre? We have eight minutes for questions, remarks, comments. Uh, hi, Stefan. This is Andre from ISC. So, um, are you going to publish the test suite and the compliance suite? Because we are going to develop DOH for Bind this year, and I would love to, like, if you already tested a lot of, of, of this stuff, I would love, love to have the, the test suite that I can really use to when, when we are doing the implementation so we get everything right from the beginning. So, so are you going to publish this? Okay, so at this time, uh, what we have is just, uh, it's just this list, which is a good idea of the things to test. Some are implemented in a tool which is, uh, well, it's free software, it's public, it's on a GitLab, but it's very, very alpha at this stage. But in the end, the goal is yes, to publish it and to be able to type command line minus, minus check the name of a server and then you will have an answer like we do uh, for the uh, DNS, general DNS with tools like uh, Zone Master, for instance. So. I suspect some of the other vendors will have some testing code. I know PowerDNet does, I suspect not does, and maybe Anonet Labs too. But it would be good if somebody outside of all of those does this. Anybody else? Peter? Right. So hi, uh, Stefan. Uh, so internally, we are working on a tool as well to do low, uh, so to do the, uh, to do DO performance testing, but it will use HTTP2 streams for this as well. Uh, and I've talked to the developer earlier this week, and we're going to release it at some point uh, when it's not uh, in the alpha state it is now. So this this will come out as well. Okay, I'm interested in uh, discussion on sharing of code and uh, to, to, to be sure that we are on the same, uh, we have this, well, as we don't have to redevelop if it's not necessary. Uh. <laughs> well, libcurl is cool, but uh, multi-handles are sometimes a bit difficult, at I least for we, me. I think we ended up with a different lib, ng HTTP2. Mm. Yep. You too? Yeah? Okay. Any other questions? Uh, it's also that libcurl, I use libcurl currently for, it, for DOH, but for DOT, I, it's ever, everything is done by end. Yeah, of course. So, so this is Andre this time with my DNS org hat. <laughs> so uh, you, you mentioned DNS perf, and DNS perf is now maintained by org. So uh, there's an option to ask Jerry to an org to add implement add support for DOH to, to the DNS perf. So if you, if you can do that, that would be, that would be great. So it, it's not my board hat forcing Jerry something to do that, but if you can fill an issue for DNS perf, that would be okay. great. Thank you. 
One, one of the reasons uh, why there are many tools without DOH, it, what, first, it's more recent than DOT, that's the first explanation, and also it's more complicated because you need the entire HTTP2 machine, which is quite complicated. So you depend, in the end, you depend on an external library like ng HTTP2 or libcurl, which makes new dependency, new problems, new documentation to read, etc. So DOH is a bit more difficult. Anybody else? All right, then we have 10 minutes until the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan.